Hello out there, people of the internet. Um, in this video, I'm going to be building a guitar clock, which basically is a clock made from an old guitar. I had an old guitar kicking around, and I did not know what to do with it because it really wasn't worth fixing. And I know some people are going to have a problem with this, so I decided to chop it up and build something neat out of it. So here I am, I'm making numbers, and I found that Onshape is a pretty awesome tool, and I was able to pretty much learn how to do a whole bunch of things completely by myself in a couple of YouTube videos. So I'm going to design the numbers, make sure they look like clock numbers, and then I'm going to use my 3D printer to uh, create the numbers. 3D printers are another fantastic tool. They allow you to take pretty much anything you can imagine and design in a program like Onshape and create a physical object out of it. Basically, for me to hand make these numbers would have taken days, and I was able to do it within a couple hours on the 3D printer. This is a Creality Ender 3. While that's printing, I figured I'd open up my big box from Lee Valley. I got a, um, I needed a marking gauge for this project. But I couldn't help myself, and I had to buy a one-inch strip grinder as well. I had an extra motor kicking around in the garage. But that's for another time. This marking gauge is really nice. I think it'll do exactly what I need it to do, and uh, yeah, this is the guitar. It is a uh, Kenora, Kenor, but yeah, look, that's not getting fixed. Um, but it has a beautiful burst on it, and it just has a good color to it, so. We're going to make a thin line out of it. See how the marking gauge works. That should give me an idea of where to cut. I decided to take it to the table saw for the rough cut. Which was a little overkill, I think, and uh, when I got to finishing off the cut with a handsaw, I realized that I probably should have just done the whole thing with a handsaw. But it did the job. Eventually you hit the truss rod and then you gotta get creative, right? I need some better saws. I gotta keep an eye out on the estate sales. This is a, another... It's actually a fret slot cutting saw that I got from Lee Valley as well. Lee Valley is an excellent source for fine tools. They have the Veritas brand. They, they really only sell the best of the best. I forget the exact brand of this song, but it's made in Sheffield, England. I've been using it for about four years and still haven't had to sharpen it, so the steel is just amazing quality. And it was just deep enough to cut that. Trimming up the uh, rough edges here, left from the table saw.
there really was no plan to this project and I'm kind of winging it the entire time so if you have a better way to do this uh, you can do it when you make your own guitar clock and if you do make a guitar clock I'd love to see it Yeah, so trimming this up turned out to be one of the most time-consuming parts of the project. I plan to put a hook on the uh, neck block to hang it. So I'm leaving it just a little bit out. Now to plug the hole and give myself a place to attach the movement, I'm just going to use the back of the guitar. And this was easily cut out on the bandsaw. This whole project actually got me thinking a lot more about other, not guitar things, but guitar inspired things. I was really amazed by how the guitar was actually built and I had never really taken apart an acoustic guitar before. So see just how finely built everything is and how lightweight everything is was really impressive. Structural reinforcements allowed them to use very thin materials, thin plywoods in this case. Just glue the back on and, uh, you know, use some weight to hold it down. Here I go to mark the center. I get kind of close and then I use my uh, compass here to find the exact center. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. He's my fancy center punch and mark a hole, step drill bit. And then this is a, a movement I took out of an old um, beer clock. I think it was a Budweiser clock. It was just what I had. I had to bend the arms a little to make them fit, but it did the trick. I still need to find a, a replacement for my Budweiser clock, though. And the numbers are done. Um... See, I could I went and did all that other stuff and let the 3D printer do its trick. It'll always need a little bit of cleanup off the 3D printer, but to be honest, it wasn't that bad. Once you get them dialed in, they do a pretty good job. One of the hardest things to do was to figure out exactly how to lay them out and what numbers to include. I had originally printed out 1 through 12, but then I figured, hey, it's a guitar clock. 3, 5, 7, 9, 12. Makes sense to me anyways. This was a gorgeous guitar and it was really too bad that the headstock had been destroyed because even though it's a budget brand import from the 60s it would have been neat mainly just because it looked cool so I make myself a little square to help um, align the numbers when I glue them down basically I can put them exactly where I want I even used a compass to make sure they're all in the proper locations. Eyeball them with a ruler. And then I use that to kind of mark the spot. Put some uh, thick CA glue on it. Of course the bottle's always gummed up. Not enough to squeeze out but enough to hold it.
I made sure the surface was clean before I did this as well. I should probably mention that. Um, and if you're wondering, it's been up on a wall at the time of this recording for about two years. And the numbers are still there, so I don't know. It must be doing okay. I just used some hooks and some wire to make an attachment point. Because it needs to hang, right? It's a clock. Especially a wall clock. This is just some wire I had lying around. I don't know exactly what it is. It might be stainless steel. But I think it's overkill for hanging this clock, whatever it is. The final step, really, is just to give it a quick wipe down with some walrus oil. And that'll kind of nourish the bare wood and, uh, yeah. You know, it kind of fills any little cracks or scratches. And Once you buff it off, it really has a, a nice finish. I also use it on the bare wood in the, in the sound hole and to kind of seal up the uh, paper label. Let it dry, give it a nice buff. Walrus oil is like a, a mineral oil with wax finish. And it's environmentally friendly, food safe. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe in the background they're punching bees to get the wax or something. I don't know, maybe it's not entirely environmentally friendly, but I like it. I even put a little on the arms to make them nice and shiny. And there it is, ticking away. Anyways, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, or whatever. Thank you for watching.